Are you getting started running Docker containers in your home lab? Are you wondering what are the best Docker containers to run on my home server? Well, I've got you guys covered. I'm going to consider with you guys the top five Docker containers to run on your home server and why I run them. So stick around, let's dive right in. So guys, the first Docker container found on my list of the best Docker containers for home server is a solution known as Rancher. Rancher is a fantastic Kubernetes management and orchestration platform that allows you to easily spin up new Kubernetes clusters and even onboard and manage existing Kubernetes clusters in your environment. Rancher includes integrations with the popular public cloud providers as well as private cloud technologies such as VMware vSphere. And since I run my home lab on VMware vSphere, it makes it extremely easy to use Rancher to deploy new Kubernetes clusters on top of vSphere. Using the cluster management functionality found in Rancher, you can easily create new Kubernetes clusters. And as you can see, you can create those on top of public cloud technologies such as EKS, AKS, and GKE, as well as using infrastructure as a service platform such as Amazon EC2, Azure Virtual Machines, DigitalOcean, as well as other providers such as Linode, and as I already mentioned, VMware vSphere. Using the RKE configuration with node templates, you can define all of your node templates and then Rancher will then build out the Kubernetes cluster based on those node template configurations. By navigating to the apps catalog, you have full access to all of the available Helm charts that allow you to easily spin up additional applications in your new Kubernetes clusters managed by Rancher. So you can easily spin up solutions like GitLab, HashiCorp Vault, MySQL, and many, many other applications, as you can see in the full list of the catalog. Rancher is arguably my top pick of the first Docker container that you spin up on your home server, as it is a gateway to many other solutions that you can then stand up using the Rancher solution and new Kubernetes clusters that you have provisioned with Rancher. The next solution on my list of the best Docker containers that you can run in your home lab and on your home server is a solution called Portainer. Portainer is an excellent management solution for standalone Docker containers, allowing you to easily install, configure, and manage containers running inside of Kubernetes, Docker host, Nomad, and the list goes on and on. If you're looking for that graphical user interface, that is the ultimate way to visualize and see all of your Docker containers running on your Docker host, Portainer is it. The Portainer dashboard is just quite simply beautiful. You can easily visualize and see the integrations with your standalone Docker host, or even if you have Portainer installed in a Kubernetes cluster, it makes it super easy to manage and visualize all of those container resources that you have running inside of your Docker environment. I love the fact that you can easily see all of your containers you can see the image that they're running, the creation date, the network configuration, publish ports, all of that configuration is exposed very easily for you to manage and configure. And then as you can see, you can select containers, you can perform lifecycle operations, starting, stopping, restarting. You can add containers to the environment. Another thing that I really like about Portainer is the ability and integration that it has with Docker Compose with the visual editor. So in a visual GUI way, you can navigate to stacks. You can manually edit in the web editor. If you have Docker Compose code that you want to paste in, you can do that here. You can upload files. You can point it at a Git repository for running GitLab or pointing to a repository that's publicly accessible. And you can also customize a template. So you can create those application stacks very quickly and easily. Portainer, like Rancher, also has a built-in registry of very common applications 
applications that ones may want to install inside of their Docker container host. The list is quite a few applications. However, it's not as extensive as the list that you get with Rancher. And of course, you can still always pull publicly available containers. These are just the ones that are built in out of the box for easy installation and provisioning. So Portainer is an excellent option and certainly is on my list of the top Docker containers for the home lab. The next container on my list of the best Docker containers to spin up on your home server in the home lab is a Docker container solution called GitLab. If you're like me, you have been working on your DevOps skills, your platform engineering skills, as they're calling it now. Understanding the whole Git process is fundamental to understanding how to build these CI CD pipelines that DevOps engineers as well as developers are taking advantage of today when using solutions such as containers to build these microservices and other applications. I am experimenting around in the home lab with cool projects that I really have been interested in, such as automation with my home lab processes, such as image builds, and keeping up with my Terraform and Ansible code that I have been writing to do various things in the home lab. And to do that, I use GitLab heavily. Using GitLab, you can create your own private Git repository to actually check in code in your home lab environment and use that to trigger other tasks and automated processes. So GitLab is a great way to do that and it's easy to spin up, especially using Portainer to pull down that GitLab Docker container. So I had the Docker container spun up for GitLab and so we're going to log in and I'm just going to show you guys some of the cool things that we can do. We can create projects and as you can see here, I've created a new project, my awesome home lab project. And with this, we can see all of the capabilities that we have to uh, actually use this new repository that is attached to this project. And as you can see as well, you've got all of the tools and tool sets that you're used to or want to learn about if you're interested in this whole concept of DevOps, platform engineering, or keeping up with your home lab code, you can use GitLab to effectively do that. One of the cool things that I do with my production GitLab instance in the home lab environment is I actually use CI CD pipelines in conjunction with HashiCorp Packer to maintain and keep my image bills current for both Windows Server as well as Ubuntu Server so that I don't have to manually do those types of tasks in the home lab environment. So you can do really cool things like that. And that's been part of my learning experience over the past couple of years is getting my mind around some of the concepts and workflows of the DevOps workflow process. Running GitLab as a container is a great, easy way to uh, stand up a GitLab instance and start learning about this workflow of DevOps, checking in your code, checking out that code, updating it, using that to create CI CD pipelines. And all of those things are just going to help you with your learning and taking that knowledge into production environments that you're working with. Number four on my list of the best Docker containers to run on your home server and home lab is a solution called HashiCorp Vault. As we've just mentioned, we've covered starting to delve into DevOps and infrastructure as code, checking in that code to a solution like GitLab or a code repository. One of the things that you really start thinking about when you start delving into infrastructure as code is how do I deal with passwords and secrets? I don't necessarily just want to be in plain text in my code that I've checked into the GitLab repository. So you start to think about how you handle those things. HashiCorp Vault is a solution that allows you to either statically create credentials and store those safely and securely there or dynamically create credentials on the fly in your code and have those merged into your code on the fly as you have these build processes run. I use HashiCorp Vault to store credentials that I call in my Packer code, for instance, so that I can build virtual machines without having to hard code credentials for my vCenter server or for an ESXi server. But that's just scratching the surface. You can house any type of credential that you want. HashiCorp Vault is fairly easy to get installed. And I actually use the built-in HashiCorp Vault 
application via the Helm chart built into Rancher. So I went through the Rancher installation of HashiCorp Vault and was able to successfully get Vault configured and up and running. And I actually have a fairly detailed blog post on how I went about doing that. So I can just do a kubectl get pods and we're going to look at the namespace of Vault. And as you can see, I have a couple of pods running that constitute the Vault installation. So I'm going to go out to my Vault installation. We get to the login page. We log in with our token that we've created. And as you can see, I have just a simple Vault installation. I've got my vCenter server secrets engine. However, you can create any kind of secret engine that you want to utilize uh, that basically covers most of the public cloud and private cloud environments interacting with with your secrets and as you can see you can create generic key value pairs uh, vault can actually act as a pki infrastructure to hand out pki certificates in the environment ssh uh, one-time password active directory uh, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and a lot of uh, strong integration with HashiCorp solutions. So I can just create a new key value pair, call this test KV, and we're going to enable the engine. And you can create new values for the newly created engine easily. Let's call this my app user and we can save that and we can add additional values so we're going to call this my app password and we can save that as you can see in our key value store we have a test kv engine we've got a my app password a my app user so we can programmatically hit our vault instance in this key value store and we can automatically pull those values from this key value store instead of hard coding my app password and my app user you can pull those from that key value pair very easily well finally on my list of the best docker containers to spin up for your home server in your home lab environment is a solution known as Dashi. And I covered this topic in detail about how to create the ultimate home lab dashboard. So when you spin up all of these containers alongside your other virtual machines and other services that you have running in the home lab, you need a way to keep up with those services. How do you get to them? A home lab dashboard is a great way to do that. Dashi is the solution that I have chosen in my home lab to run my home lab dashboard. And I love how it allows me to keep up with those critical services. My home lab dashboard allows me to keep up and bookmark those services and resources that I want to quickly be able to navigate to. So I have this configured as a new browser tab that each time I open my browser, it actually opens my home lab dashboard. I've got critical network services in the dashboard. I have my hypervisors with ESXi hosts, Proxmox hosts, out of band management for those super micro servers that I have running in the lab. I've got my Unify equipment, including my Unify Protect controller, Unify controller, as well as Kubernetes and containerized workload services, such as my Rancher installation and Portainer, just as a couple. Dashi makes this easy to create. You can configure and easily add services, creating new sections to your dashboard, new entries to those dashboards, and pulling customized, really nice looking icons for those services that are easily obtained and readily available out on GitHub. So guys, what do you think? These are my top five Docker containers to run on your home server in the home lab. I am by no means saying these are the top Docker containers to run in your home lab. Really, each home lab environment or production environment are snowflakes. They're all different. So the Docker containers that may be most useful to you might be different containers than I'm running as my top five. However, hopefully this list of my top five Docker containers might give you guys some ideas of things that I'm using Docker containers for in my home lab environment so that it can inspire you to perhaps try some of these solutions. I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep on learning in your home lab environments, and I hope to see you guys soon.